Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, we're discussing this recent crowd strike situation. For those who are unaware, large swaths of the West, primarily the Western world, were really shut down. It's my understanding airlines went down, all kinds of banking functions were not available because of this situation. I, I don't even fully understand it. I'm not even gonna cite anything. There's all kinds of stuff out there on the internet talking about this, but long story short, CrowdStrike was providing some sort of security services, antiviral, whatever sort of software associated with a lot of Microsoft products. And that runs a large segment of basically the administrative tasks of a large segment of the Western economy. That all shuts down and certain aspects of the West sort of ground to a halt over the past few days in the most recent memory here. So the reason for the video is I'm seeing this increasing move to digitize everything. And this is especially the case in the financial sector where it looks like, quite honestly, the, the, the nanny state, nanny minders, the international nanny minders, if you want to call them that, at places like the World Economic Forum, et cetera. And it's interesting because I look at the banking side of this and people have asked me, you know, you, you're, very, you're very concerned about the liberty ramifications or, or the lack of liberty that will come if all of this is rolled out. And then you can sort of talk dispassionately about the creation of Enbridge and, and all these new, you know, the, this sort of new banking infrastructure that's being created in Eurasia especially. Well, I look at it as two different things. The creation of the new central banking infrastructure for like international trade and, and the rise of BRICS and what they're talking about as a possible international trade currency. And then this Enbridge to create a platform where these different currency authorities that sort of sit on the ridge of the world island, to use Halford McKinder's uh, phrase, you know, how they're going to interact and how all that works. That's one thing. That's sort of bank to bank, institution to institution. My big concern is this notion of a digital wallet and digital currency where all of your money, your ability to operate in the world financially, which is going to impact you in every single way, shape, or form in the modern world. I'm concerned about that part of it. Again, trade currencies and sort of operations of, you know, recording international trade transactions between central banking apparatuses and their, and their currency authority counterparts, that's one thing. And, I, and I'll talk, you know, that has its ups and downs, and, and I can get into that, but it's not really the thrust of these videos. I'm talking about the retail level currency where, you know, you're, all of your, you know, you'll, it's going to be like China, where all of your financial transactions have to go through your smartphone. Well, what happens if it shuts down? And that's what we saw with CrowdStrike. Now, here we are sitting here in Thailand between the first reading now through Parliament of this whole digital wallet scheme, which by the way, nobody can still explain to me at this point how exactly this thing's gonna be funded and how Thailand isn't going into debt to the tune of two times more liquidity than exists in the banking system as we speak right now, how exactly that is not gonna go on the back of the Thai people in terms of taxes in the future to pay it off, even though we don't actually get money out of it. Anybody that ends up getting the 10,000 baht handout just gets these digital tokens that they can turn on and off at will, they can choose where you can spend it, and they can also choose what you can spend it on. So how this is even money doesn't even make any sense to me. But leave that part aside, it's all digitized. What happens in the future if there's a glitch in the system? Are we gonna, is Thailand gonna lose her ability to do business? This is my point. All of this cashless stuff, it seems like a great thing to all of these technocrats in their ivory towers on their drawing boards. But when it gets down to the real world down here with the mud and the blood and the beer, to quote Johnny Cash, you know, how's it gonna work? And if it shuts down and just decides not to work, what happens to you then as just a person, a rank and file Thai person, or anybody here living in Thailand, and you can't access your money because, oh, you know, you get the blue screen. Yeah, we'll put that blue screen up on screen here, a photo of that. You know, that's what everybody's been seeing in the West because they can't use any of their, any of their, they can't even use their cars in some cases. Teslas are coming up with these blue screens on them. So again, is that what we want for our monetary system here in the kingdom of Thailand?